is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at an affordable 15 inch notebook. This is the HP Pavilion Sleekbook 15 or the 15Z more accurately because it has an AMD CPU inside. It sells for about $550, 15.6 inch again, AMD A8 APU, not too thick at all, relatively light for a 15 inch. We're going to look at it now. So this is the HP Pavilion 15Z Sleekbook, and again, it's available now on HP's website and in retail stores, and there's a couple of configurations you can get. Ours is not the bottom of the line, nor is it the top of the line, though it's towards the top end with a 1.6 GHz AMD A8 APU that can turbo up to 2.4 GHz. That is a quad-core CPU, and it has... It, what AMD does with graphics is interesting. It's discrete level, they call it, AMD 7600G graphics, but it's all combined with this processing unit into kind of a tidy little power-efficient package. Now, this is basically a, a ULV, or ultra-low voltage CPU, much like Intel Atom and Intel Core i3 and i5 CPUs. And in terms of performance, well, the bad news is this is the A8. You could actually get it with an A4, some lower-end CPUs. It actually benchmarks slower than some of the Intel Atom Clover Trail tablets that we've been working with lately running Windows 8. So this guy is not a fast performer. If you need to do heavy lifting, look elsewhere. Our machine has 4 gigs of RAM. You can get it with 8 gigs if you want. And we have a 500 gig hard drive in here. Only conventional spinning hard drives because this is not one of the high-end, high-performance line models. You can get 7200 RPM drives for better speed if you want. And you can get higher capacity drives all the way up to a terabyte. It has single band Atheros Wi-Fi wired Ethernet, and it does not have an optical drive. Surprising for a 15.6 inch machine, that's not ultra light exactly. Yeah, it's a sleek book, so it's kind of on the thin side, but nope, nowhere on the side is there an optical drive here. Machine has a 15.6 inch panel right here. It's glossy display, no surprise there. You know, it's fairly bright though. For a budget notebook, often they're not very bright, and this one does fairly well in a bright sunlit room. 1366 by 768 resolution, so we're not talking an HD kind of display here, but it's fine for 720p content. And for a TN panel, viewing angles aren't bad. If you move off axis, yeah, it, it is going to start to fade out on you. It's a little hard to see here because of glare issues, but you can see it's, it's actually not too bad. We've gone pretty far off angle there. The keyboard is actually nice and roomy, and we have a number pad right here, which isn't that common on 15.6 inch notebooks. I like that. And not too spongy, so there's not much moving on the deck over here. Actually, this is better than my HP NV15 keyboard in terms of being fairly firm. Large keys, easy to use, easy to see, black with white masking, nothing too fancy going there. You don't have to hit the F, you do not have to hit the FN key, excuse me, to do the top row multimedia keys here, which I think a lot of people prefer these days. And this deck right here is very glossy. As you can see, this is going to pick up fingerprints like crazy. This laptop is available in black that you're looking at right here. For $25 extra, you can get it in your choice of either blue or red. See the trackpad here, offset to the side since there's a number pad on this side. Not really large given the size of the laptop. A little surprised at that. It's okay. It's, it's shiny. It has a stippled texture so you can tell when you've gone on and off. And there's obviously a dish right here. I like to have a little bit more resistance myself. And you've got the usual two clickers right here. And it supports the side gestures that are so important to Windows 8. Since this is not a touchscreen model, HP does make a TouchSmart version of this, but that's not what we're looking at right now here. One thing I will say is the, the edges are a little too sensitive on this, and that's not an unusual problem or complaint to have with Windows 8 laptops. A lot of them, the drivers really just pick up any flitting near the edge while you're navigating around and start to bring up things like your charms bar or switching in and out of apps when you didn't mean to. We take a look up here, you can see we have our Altec Lansing branding and we have Altec Lansing stereo speakers built in. We have Dolby Mobile software for audio. Power button right there that's illuminated. And we'll take a look around. You can see how glossy the display is and in fact even the bezel is. Up top here we have the usual HP Pavilion webcam, 720p webcam. Some rubber bumpers over here so that the thing does not clack together when it closes. The hinge is quite stiff by the way so it stays closed nicely. A little hard to open with one hand. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm picking up the whole notebook and it's running around instead. Lid, very, very glossy. Very pretty when it's clean. It's got a little bit of a sparkly texture going on there to make it a little bit interesting looking. Pretty robust hinges and HP's usual curved design around the hinges over here. Dishes in, gives it a little style, it makes it distinct, it tells you it's an HP product. 
and on the side here we have our cooling vents. You don't need a whole lot of cooling for a ULV CPU and this guy runs fairly quiet and fairly cool too. I, I can always hear the hard drive spinning a little bit and the fan spinning a little bit, just a little nee in the background, but nothing too bad. We have three USB ports here. For some reason, HP doesn't mark the use blue for the USB 3.0 port, so you're just going to have to either memorize it or look at the masking every time. This side right here is a USB 2.0 port, and there's our combo mic headphone jack. Lock slot right there. Back view, you can see what the hinge area looks like, and the battery resides in the hinge area. Actual removable battery. Pleasure to see these days. Laptop weighs 4.6 pounds, by the way, so that makes it reasonably light. That's why it's called a sleek book, and as you can see, it's not too thick either. Here is our two USB 3.0 ports, full-size HDMI, drop-down Ethernet. It's actually thin enough that they have to use a little drop-down style like you see on Ultrabooks. You don't have to drop too much to work. And that's where our power plug goes. comes with a fairly compact charger. Again, it, it doesn't have a high power requirement here, so it doesn't need much of a charger. Full-size SD card slot right there, and LEDs on the side to let you know that it's sleeping, for example. Uh, not where you're actually going to see them very handily when you're using the laptop, but that, that's, that is what it is. Not too bad looking, certainly. And the bottom here. HP does not say that this is user upgradable. Now, there are two screws to pop off the keyboard and other screws to remove the bottom. I'm sure you could find the hard drive and the RAM if you open this up, no problem, even though they say it's not user serviceable. And we have our two releases for the little battery that runs right here. It's a very small battery for a 15 inch notebook, 2550 milliamps, 37 watt per hour, uh, which means, you know what, even though it's a ULV CPU, which doesn't demand much power, this guy doesn't run very long on a charge, about three and a half hours. By the way, I suggest that you keep the lock position in the lock position. Usually with most notebooks, if you don't, it still stays in place, but the battery will come out pretty easily if you don't have your lock slot on. Now to test out the screen, the speakers, and the performance all at once, we're going to play a 1080p video. Obviously, that's higher resolution than the display actually supports, but you could use your HDMI out to play that to a TV or a bigger monitor. And volume is at 70%. bad audio. Not bad at all. Enables the brain to repair itself. You and call it the cure. I want you to start testing in chimps. It's playing it back perfectly smoothly and that was very nice sounding audio. I'd say HP always does a good job with that. Those Altec Lansing speakers sound pretty good. Let's check out some music next to see how it sounds playing music. Really sounds nice. The starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go. So, might be a relatively speaking budget notebook, but really good sounding audio there through the built in speakers and quite a bit of volume. Again, we're at 70% volume right now. So, if you're looking for something you won't have to plug into external speakers, it does fine. And obviously, it can handle HD video playback pretty well, too. Nice there. Performance, that still is going to be the weak point here. And again, if you're just playing video, if you're using MS Office, the web browser, even Adobe Flash Player, it's up to the task. It's adequate. It's For those of you who are more familiar with Intel Core CPUs, this is, again, somewhere between an Intel Atom and a Core i3 Ivy Bridge latest generation in terms of performance, with the graphics being certainly more like the Core i3. It's definitely better than the graphics you're going to get with a Intel Atom CPU of any kind currently. You can see right here what we've got, our AMD A8, 4 gigs of RAM, 64-bit Windows Home Premium installed here, and our Windows Experience Index, 6.2 for the processor, 5.9 for RAM, which is pretty much par for the course on a lot of notebooks, desktop graphics performance, 4.4, 3D gaming graphics, 6.2, and the hard disk, which is a traditional spinning hard disk, is 5.9. 
In terms of synthetic benchmarks on PC Mark 7, it scored an 11.25. That's a painfully low number. That's really actually lower than we've seen on some Intel Atom Clover Trail Windows 8 tablets. Does it feel that abysmally slow? No, it doesn't. It feels usable. Does it feel zippy and responsive like uh, your $1,000 Core i5 Ultrabook would feel? Well, certainly not, but then again, this is half the price. For 3D Mark, we had high hopes maybe for the the APU going on there with the AMD Radeon HD 7600G graphics, but not too impressive. 3D Mark 11, it scored a 667 combined. Graphics was 627 physics, which really looks at the CPU more, 1697, and the combined score was 521 that it gave there. And that was on the performance setting, which is the middle difficulty setting. They have one that's for real low notebooks, one for gaming and high-end notebooks. This is the one that's kind of for your 720p notebook. Now when I mention that slower performance, will you notice it? Well, let's see how quickly it can load our web page, which is not cached. And that wasn't too, too bad, was it? Honestly, sometimes it's slower, sometimes it's faster, you just kind of never know. Slightly moody browser. Handling the interstitial just fine. So it's certainly usable there. It's fine. Again, in MS Office 2010 or 2013, your choice will also be fine. And if you get rid of some of the bloatware that HP loves to put on here, it might get a little bit faster. Of course, we have the shortcut to HP Games right here. Their shortcut to eBay. Those things are just web shortcuts. It doesn't matter. We have Norton Internet Security, which is kind of a heavyweight intrusive product. If you want to get rid of that and just stick with Microsoft's own free security essentials, it could be just fine too. Other software includes Getting Started with Windows 8, which actually is pretty helpful if you're new to Windows 8. HP did a pretty good job there. We've got their Solitaire Collection, we've got Kindle, we've got Netflix, we've got eBay, we've got the Office, so you can start your trial up of Office, 30-day trial right there. HP My Room, uh, web conferencing more than anything else. Support Assistant, that definitely is handy. Connected Music over here, Skype is pre-installed. So got HP's own webcam software and some CyberLink software for multimedia on here. Not too, too bad, but if you get rid of some of that, you might speed it up a bit, too. So, all in all, not too bad a machine for the price. Uh, really meant for light computing users, given the performance characteristics here. It might look like your big 15.6 inch all-arounder, but really it's sort of like a, a brainy netbook that's grown up and gotten bigger in terms of its performance characteristics. There's a lot of stiff competition out there. Dell Inspiron 15, for example, running around the same price, you get a Core i3 or Core i5. Now, it's not that I don't like AMD. AMD is just fine. But since this is really a low-end AMD CPU in here, you might do better actually going with the Inspiron. Also, Asus has had some really aggressive products around five to $700 these days with some lovely styling and performance. So HP is in a difficult market right here. There's a lot of competition. So it depends on what you want. Great speakers, pretty nice display right here. Large keyboard with numeric keypad, those are nice features. And if those are the things that are important to you and you're not going to do any heavy lifting with your computer, this one's the way to go. If you need something that has all more all-around power, you say you want to process video, it's something I really wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time doing on this, then you might want to look at some of the competition with beefier CPUs. So that's the HP Pavilion Sleekbook 15. It's available now again as configured here. $550 stocks at $479. And We've seen better for the money, but still it does offer a few nice things like a bright display, solid build quality, and a pretty decent keyboard. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to hit that like button.